Hey guys, Dan from DC Brakes here. Welcome to this video. Today I'm going to take you through our new plugin called Halo. Halo is a romper, a synth, and a sampler rolled into one. It's like a hybrid of those things, as well as having a load of filters, distortions, effects, and modulation capabilities, and over 300 presets, including leads, reeses, womps, pads, stabs, and effects. There's loads to get into, and I'm going to go through every single piece of functionality to do with Halo, as well as a load of the presets. So let's jump right in. Okay, so let's open up our instance of Halo. As you can see, Halo is divided into lots of panels. Each panel contains a different aspect of Halo's functionality. In the middle, you can see the preset browser, the kind of beating heart of the plugin. But every time you click on a panel, that center screen will change to reflect additional functionality associated with the panel that you have clicked. Let's have a quick run through of the panels and then I'll come back and do everything in more detail after. Okay, so let's start with the filter panel. There's a low pass, a notch, and a high pass. And you can control the Q values from the interface here. And each filter has its own LFO. Distortion, there are three types of distortion. There's a subtle, drive, and warm, more aggressive, on drive, and then in custom, you can build your own distortion within there. Post filter is a filter slightly more complex with two extra filter types than the filter panel. That's peak. And phase is an all pass filter. This comes after distortion in the signal flow. Um, thanks to Prolix for forcing me to put it in there. But in hindsight, that was a good recommendation, Chris. So cheers for that. FX, there's a reverb. Delay. Phaser. And a chorus. The output panel contains master volume and width. And you can see on here the stereo image of your sound. Envelope, well, that's an envelope. And I've included the two most useful aspects of the envelope um, with this plugin here. Attack and hold, so you can make it more of a stab with hold or more of a pad with attack. We've got two LFOs where you can make your own LFO shapes and a stepper where you can cause whatever damage you want with that. At the bottom is tone, which is some quick and easy EQing. And then bottom left is a pitch envelope. On the left are the sound sources. So this is the sampler. That is the sub. And this is the synth. Now each panel has a power button to toggle off that panel's functionality. So that can be really useful if, when you're designing sounds or you just want to audition what a sound sounds like without effects or distortion or the filters, whatever you want. At the bottom, underneath the keyboard, you will see there's three buttons down here. There's analyzers, and that will turn off the spectral analyzer and all the other analyzers. And this can just speed up your GPU or you maybe find them annoying or whatever. 
the legato button this affects how the filters trigger with the legato off the filters will trigger the filter LFOs will trigger every single time you hit a key with them on if the key presses overlap then the filter LFO triggering will not happen on the overlapped uh, key presses. The mono button changes the polyphony of the sound. So this is mono. There's a glide. And then when mono's off, grayed out like that, it's just polyphonic. Nasty. So let's have a look at the preset browser to start with. So on the left are the folders that we have divvied up the presets into. These follow a pattern of either the kind of preset it is or the genre. So we've got classics. So lots of classic uh, sounds in there. We've got drums. So this is every kick and snare sound from our two sample packs that we've made. Jump up is pretty jump up. Leads, uh, leads, liquid is lots of nice lush kind of things. Modulators, these are presets that use a lot of the onboard modulation uh, probably more than other plugins other plugins other presets neuro is neuro -y sounds one shots there's one bank of one shot bass samples And those are all just one shot bass hits. The Reese folder, probably my favorite folder. So there is a ton of Reese's in there. Stabs, well, that's a load of stabs. The synth section folder are uh, presets made only from the synth sections in Halo, so the sub and the synth, so no pre made samples at all in this. <laughs> So Halo is pretty capable of making its own sounds uh, rather than using our pre-made sample maps. Tech. Nice techy, techy sounds in there. Uh, there's a folder called user um, where you can make your own uh, presets. Uh, there's a blank setting just to kind of reset Halo. That's a pad I made a bit earlier. And there's a Wobblers. The Wobblers folder. Containing lots of crazy sounds in there. So above the browser, you'll see the tags. And if you click on a tag, you'll get all the corresponding presets with that tag in. So leads are leads, Reese's are Reese's. Womps, there's a lot of womps. Yeah. 
liquid is well there's spaces and leads and pads stabs stabs Ugh. pads you know I think the point is is that lots of the sounds could be a pad could be a stab could be liquid um, depending on how you configure them so the tags are really useful just to show you what could be possible so, I mean that's a, obviously a pad but if you envelope it properly That's quite a nice stab. And then a few FX. Presets as well. So within the browser, you can add your own presets. You can rename the existing ones, delete the existing ones, overwrite the existing ones. And the same with the folders. So it's versatile, you can kind of do whatever you want there. All right, let's dig a bit deeper into the filter section. So, as I mentioned earlier, each filter has its own LFO. Um, within the center panel, you can control all the LFO settings. This amount is linked to the knob on the main UI. You can change the rate, the shape of the LFO. Change the offset, which is where the LFO shape kicks in from. And then the rate mod. will slow down the rate. So if you turn the rate up nice and high, yeah, this little Blade Runner kind of vibe there. So there are three LFOs, one for each of the three filters. Okay, let's head to distortion. So, um, the distortion panel has three different types of distortion. Uh, we've got warm. Let's just reset these. Which is a kind of subtle drive. Overdrive, which is a bit more for us. And then the custom. So in the center panel, you can change the custom wave shape uh, just by clicking on this table. And you'll realize pretty quickly how powerful it is and it can be a complete monster at times. Um, I mean, quite a lot of the sounds in Halo have distortion already on them. Adding extra distortion sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. So we'll leave it to you to figure out which need them. Uh, there's a gain here, uh, which will increase uh, the level of the wave shaper. Um, you can really change the sound with this tool. Uh, just be careful when you crank the gain because it gets rather loud. There's a bit reduction knob here just to add a bit of noise into proceedings. The random button here will generate a random wave shape. And there's a preset menu with some pre-made uh, wave shapes. For you to uh, have a mess around with. You can save your own. Just um, 
over here, just choose a name, press save, and choose one of those. And then this will take you to the preset folder location on your hard drive. There's a folder called distortion and the presets are in there. All right, let's go on to reverb. I'm going to choose a nicer sound to work with. Let's turn those off. So reverb, got the size here. And then down here in the center panel, you've got low cut, high cut, damp, width. And then for delay, the time is up here. And then low cut, high cut. And then the crush is, uh, it's a little uh, bit crusher on the delay signal. You just want to add a bit of crunchiness to your delay path. Feedback is feedback. I'm assuming you guys know how all of this works. The phaser. The phaser actually comes pre-distortion because it just sounded a bit better like that. So the rate is up here. You can change the uh, low and high frequency elements of the phaser here. Feedback. And then this loop button. So at the moment, the LFO is controlled, sorry, the phaser is controlled by an LFO. Uh, and if you take the loop function off, you get one cycle of the LFO and then it stops. You keep it on, the LFO just keeps going forever. And that could be really nice with a bass sound. You just want to add a bit of modulation to the front of it, and that's all you want. Um, and you can do that really easily with the phaser. Chorus. Nice wide chorus. That is the only control for it, just that one knob there. The output panel, well, this is pretty straightforward. There's just the master volume here, which is linked to the knob up there. Width. Envelope, well, that's an envelope. The LFO, okay. So, here is where we can start having loads of fun. We can draw our own shapes into the LFO just by clicking around. If you uh, scroll with the mouse wheel whilst hovering on one of the nodes, it will curve that node path. There's a random button, same as what was in the uh, custom distortion panel, which will give you your own unique LFO shape. And there's another preset browser. And again, should you want to save your own uh, presets, you can from there. Uh, so let's close that. Uh, the amount here and the rate are linked to the amount and the rate on the main UI. And there's an offset. So you can choose which part of the uh, LFO shape <coughs> the LFO um, starts with. So at the bottom, we can choose where we are going to route the LFO. So take them all off. It's not going anywhere. Our options are the low pass filter frequency, the high pass filter frequency, the notch filter frequency, the post filter frequency, uh, the main volume, and the main global pitch. You put them all on, it gets a bit wonky. And every time you uh, root 
the LFO to uh, one of the filters or one of the destinations here, a pink circle for LFO1 will appear, a blue circle for LFO2 will appear, and a yellow circle for the stepper will appear. And when you change their amounts, you will see that those circles change accordingly. So you should be able to see what the LFO is controlling fairly easily. The loop button here is a bit like the phaser LFO, so you can put it into envelope mode, which means it will have one cycle of the LFO. Take that LFO off. <laughs> If you turn loop on, it will just cycle endlessly. So LFO2 is exactly the same as LFO1, just in a greeny blue. And the stepper uh, is similar to the others. So let's route this to a few destinations. So that's our sound with no processing on. And that's with processing. So the step is, yeah, it's really cool for um, getting creative with. Um, underneath each uh, LFO and stepper, you'll see just a kind of snapshot of the LFO shape or the stepper shape. So let's move on to tone. Tone is just a really quick and easy EQ. Um, you need a low boost or a high boost, just come down here, give you know one or two of these knobs a quick, a quick go, and you can really quickly just dial it in. In the center panel, the only additional uh, function is the Q values, just to smooth out those curves. And then there is the picture. So the pitch envelope, if you increase it, the pitch will start from a higher position. If you decrease it, it will start from a lower position. The center panel contains a couple of extra uh, envelope functions than the main uh, panel, but you can do most of it with the main panel. If you decrease the hold, it will 
we'll start going the other way. And this is really nice uh, if you want to add a kind of thump to the beginning of your bass sound. So that is very uh, useful. Let's take a look at the sound generators. Okay, so we are in the sample window now. There's the waveform, which corresponds to the uh, sample map and the key that you have pressed. So every time you press a key, it will show you the waveform associated to that key that is playing. On the main uh, panel over here, we've got volume, drive, and pitch. As you can hear, this is only affecting the pitch of the sample. It's not affecting the sub or the synth. So in the center screen, we've got our waveform. This rev button will reverse the sample. Let's just get it onto a good preset for this. Okay. That's in reverse. And then the start point will change the start point of the sample. And you can really change how the audio sounds, what it's doing. And then, let's say you like all the modulation and the effects and stuff that's going on, but you want to try it with a different sound. Well, click this box here, and this gives you access to every single sample map in Halo, and you can just choose a new one. You can use the plus and minus keys to scroll through, or hit the random button, and it will randomly select any sample map it chooses. And you can end up with, you know, any kind of possibility through here. And uh, I was really keen to include this functionality because when we started producing, it was largely hardware. You might have a few samplers or uh, synth sound generators, um, out outboard ones, and you you so often just made the mistake of dropping your um, your MIDI sequence onto the wrong track in your DAW. And you'd have like a uh, a drum um, uh, a drum MIDI sequence triggering suddenly triggering the bass sample, and it would do just something like weird and quite often wicked. And you you know then you'd be like, wow, that's cool. Let's you know let's change everything. Let's just work on that cool uh, bass groove that you know we randomly stumbled upon. So I think randomness is quite a cool part of um, music production, and this was a really nice way of just getting completely different sounds. Okay, um, the last button here is the custom button. And if you click this, a few things happen. Firstly, the panel over on the left now says custom, and the three knobs have been replaced by the corresponding knobs to this to what's going on over here and what's going on over here is that we have replaced our rompler section of halo with uh, a sampler where the user can drop in their own sound files so let's go and grab a sound file <laughs> that's a nice one let's chuck them in here 
Okay. All right, he's... So in the middle box, um, you can change the root note. Sounds about right. I'm just going to solo this channel. Um, these three grey buttons next to the sound gen uh, titles will solo that sound generator. There we go. That's a nice sound, like that. So the rev button will reverse it. There's a loop function. If you just hover your mouse to the left and right sides of the waveform, you can change the start and end points. Okay, let's bring everything else back in. So, this allows you to import your own audio, spread it across the keyboard, and run it through all of Halo's uh, functionality, all of the filters, effects, the distortions, and, you know, make your own presets and sounds, basically. That's it, with nothing on it. Yeah, you know, good sound. Now it's a monster. Let's uh, flip this back into Factory, which is the onboard rompler. I think we ended up somewhere quite weird there. Snail jizz. That, no, that won't do. Warlock mental. Let's just flip the preset down here. Nice. Okay. Let's look at sub. I'm just going to solo the sub channel. Sub is just a very simple sine wave oscillator. We've got the volume and drive, which kind of changes it into more of a square wave. Octave. Um, and if we... So there's the direct button at the bottom. Direct uh, routes the sub straight to the output of Halo and bypasses all of the onboard filters, effects, modulation, etc. If you switch that off, then it goes through all of those things, as you can hear. Um, so... A lot of the time it's good to have it going direct if you want to make sure your bass has, you know, good weight to it. Let's have a look at the synth. Turn the volume up, that would help. Okay, basic. So we've got volume, unison. Let's get a better sound. That's better. Unison, pitch. And then within the center panel, you can see the two oscillators and change their waveform. Got the octave. Uh, micro detune. A, turn that off. a low cut. High cut. And a mix between the two. Okay, so we've looked through all the panels. Let's have a look at these buttons underneath the center panel. The first one is Matrix. And within this window, we get access to a secondary modulation system within Halo. So aside from the uh, routing buttons we have in the LFOs and Stepper, if you right-click any knob, you will get a little pop-up menu. 
Uh, the first option on that list is to assign that knob to any control on your MIDI controller. And the rest are to assign those knobs to either LFO1 to the stepper or macro X and Y. And I will come back to those a little bit later. But let's assign this to LFO2. And you get a little box with the number two, and the box has the same <coughs> color scheme as the LFOs and the stepper. And within the matrix, you will get this new entry um, where you can control the minimum and the maximum values of that knob. So in this case, it's a frequency cutoff. So the minimum is 20 and the max is uh, 20,000. And we can ask our modulation system to tweak from any position we want and we can then invert that using this window here and every time you add a modulation routing it will appear in the matrix and you can change your minimum max values as you like or invert them So let's uh, have a look at the macros and let's add that to macro X and that to macro Y and let's click the macros button over here and that will hide the keyboard and give you access to the two macros. And you can assign as many knobs as you want to each macro and they will all be accessible from the matrix where again you can tweak the minimum maximum values and invert their behavior to remove simply right click and select remove control Okay, let's look at the master EQ and this is an EQ much like other EQs and if you click on a node you can drag it around. If you click an empty space it will create a new node. If you right click that node you get another pop-up menu. You can delete that node. Uh, you can disable it. You can change the curve and press cancel just to exit from that little pop-up menu so let's delete him it's always good to use lots of eq uh, with your sounds um, it's really core to getting them to poke out in the mix uh, if you click right click and empty space you get delete all bands you can just reset the eq or cancel to exit the menu The presets button will take you back to the preset browser and actually if you just click on the preset title down here that will take you to the browser as well macros was macros the solo button will bypass all the modulation and halo and uh, <clears throat> let you hear the original audio um, completely unprocessed Which is kind of cool because it's a bit like having two presets for every sound. There's the dry one, still a really good sound, really usable. Well, that one, and it sounds pretty different.
Sorry, getting distracted. Um, so the last thing to uh, point out is, so the very top left is a button, uh, the settings button. This will open up the settings window where you can change the zoom factor of Halo. So that's 100%. We've had it on 125 all this time. Uh, this OpenGL function, which can speed up the graphics if you engage it. Um, and then you can change the location of the sample. So if you want to free up some disk space on OneDrive, you can click on that and route it to uh, your new destination folder and hit go and it will move all the samples for you. So the last thing really to mention is that uh, with every um, sample map, we've sampled three octaves of each preset. That's one of my favorites. So three octaves of that and um, it's you know we've we've got these sounds from a combination of uh, soft synths, hardware synths, analog synths. We've got um, like for example the Erebus V3, which is a super fun synth. Um, the Arturia Microbrute, which is just a wicked synth. I mean, amazing value for money. If you're thinking about getting into analog synthesis, you cannot go wrong with buying one of those first. Uh, the Virus TI for all your digital synth needs. Um, still, I reckon, one of the best synths on the market. We've probably had that one a decade. Um, and then, you know, running that through um, some analog hardware. We've got an A-Designs uh, EQ, Thermionic Culture stuff. We've got a Focus Red, uh, Focus Right Red compressor, Eventide Ultra Harmonizer, TC Fireworks, um, and everything's been used uh, in the creation of these sounds. Um, I've even managed to reuse some sample banks I made many moons ago um, when I had a totally different setup with different synths, different hardware, and I've managed to incorporate them into Halo as well. And you know, it's a way of um, it's a way of bringing so much of what we do all into one place. Um, you know, we use lots of different. Uh, digital effects lots of I mean so many plugins and um, you know you've, you've got so many different kinds of uh, synths um, and we've just got them all in the same place um, made a ton of sounds from it some are featured in our tracks um, lots of them have actually and uh, we've got all our kicks and snares in there and we're going to keep adding um, sound banks to Halo um, as we go along, as we acquire more gear, as we, you know, find some cool sounds to use, we're definitely going to share them with you guys. So stay tuned for more content. Okay, so that pretty much sums up Halo. There's probably some other things that you would want to know. So if there's anything I've left out or anything that you find confusing or any questions, anything at all, just write in the comments or get in touch with us via the usual channels. And I will just have a quick muck about and um, probably play a demo track that I made uh, before. All right, peace out. Thanks for listening. I'll see you soon. Bye.